the Thoughty OT podcast. It would be really interesting to pick up on the stuff around DID because it's not something that a lot of people are aware of. And I think that, you know, there's also a lot of stigma around it. So it'd be really good to sort of understand a little bit more about it. <clears throat> Where do I start? Well, uh, basically, um, I it's it all started uh, in my adolescent age when um, I had a traumatic experience. Uh, my father died and... Uh, uh, I couldn't cope with it at all because my uh, family uh, did not really appreciate me displaying any emotions. And uh, I basically wasn't allowed to live through the things that I was experiencing. Uh, anytime when I was, would mention that uh, I might be depressed, I might need some um, assistance with that and I was just, it was all brushed off and I was told that I'm making things up. Mm -hmm. um, and I couldn't understand what's going on, but I was gradually uh, shoving all my emotions more and more into a separate place of my brain uh, where I wouldn't have to live through them. I would just get rid of them. But that's not how it works. You cannot just throw stuff away out of your brain. Mm -hmm. it, it just doesn't work that way. Um, basically, it was then already where I already understood that something wrong is going on. And I started feeling that I'm not alone here. There's there's something uh, going on all the time. Like, I would just uh, sometimes go go from from one part of brain into the another if, if if that makes sense and i could feel that there is absolutely uh two sp i actually thought there was more but uh at that point i i felt that there's two uh people inside of me that cannot even uh that don't share anything uh for like during the day let's say with with with, uh, with the people i don't trust i would be one person and I would be basically like they expected me to be and what they wanted me to be. But mm -hmm. at night, I would be another person and absolutely different. And because I was not allowed to be that person, that person was always there in the closet. And mm -hmm. uh, with time, at first, it was, it was possible to organize it in a way where the person in the closet was just hiding there, uh, just coming back sometimes whenever uh, it was allowed to. But then two years ago, what happened, and it, it is where my music story began, uh, this person just sprung up and couldn't be uh, handled anymore. It's actually me. <laughs> my other self is still there, and, and now it's, it's the reversal now she's trying to uh, get back uh, into the picture. And what happened there is basically, well, I got diagnosed uh, a year ago. Uh, and this is when finally things started making sense. Because what happened two years ago was that when, when, when uh, things started unraveling and at, at very fast speed and they couldn't be controlled anymore... There were so many things that, like really tragic things that happened uh, where um, relationships were broken, lives were broken. Um, so many things happened. I, I, I don't really share much about that because it's not no, my sure, life. Sure. It's the you, life well, you, of... You don't need to... Thank you. you no, don't it's, need to feel... it's the life of my other self. Uh, mm -hmm. um, there were people involved who lost her as a person. They, uh, some of them actually admitted that that person died, uh, even though she's still here. But I cannot allow her to uh, get uh, back into the picture because uh, she lived her life for 10 years, not allowing me in. So now it's we've agreed that this is my time but um yeah basically there are there are two lives being lived within this body and uh if 
uh, if years ago this was this the situation were handled the right way mm -hmm. if there were therapy if uh, I my, my emotions were not disregarded uh, this wouldn't have happened and again I cannot really open up on everything that happened because it's my other sure. self uh, other personality's life uh, I I'm as you can see I'm wearing a mask and I don't disclose my name uh, purely because I don't want anyone to know because she had a stellar career a family lots of friends everyone who knew her um, and and all those people don't need to know what's happening to me right now so sure sure so basically uh all this could have been prevented with therapy and which is why i uh, feel the absolute need to share my story to make sure that people know what what that is like and to make mm -hmm, sure mm -hmm. that that doesn't happen to someone they know and they love well thank you for being so open and, and sharing that with 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 me and us <laughs> um i I have to admit, I I had a a period of my life actually where I was sort of contemplating whether I had DID. I was going through this very crazy um, time, you know, when when you re when you reach adult um, adolescence as an autistic person or as anyone really, it can be quite a, a hectic time. You don't really know what you feel about certain things. You don't know where to place yourself. You don't know. Um, who you are as an individual and you're trying to assert yourself as a new person and one of the the things that I always really struggled with is emotions and I find it I found it very sort of disassociating and, and almost existential uh, just how um, different I felt in different emotional states now that I'm I'm an adult I know that you know, the things that I experienced was was more along the lines of alexithymia, the fact that I just couldn't actually put my finger on exactly how I was feeling. I just felt differently. So I was like, oh, I must be a different person. And um, I, so I, I did a little bit of research into it, but I know that the, there has been a lot of sort of stigma around it. And I, I can't imagine how that must, that must feel for people such as yourself. I really appreciate you being open about this and um, I, I mean because the topic that we're talking about today is around sort of neurodiversity and creativity I don't know whether it's it's my place to to ask how <laughs> how the ideas sort of influence your creativity or is that something that you feel able oh, to talk easy. about it's actually it's the <laughs> okay. very reason of the my creativity because people um, ask me a lot, like, how, how do you find so much inspiration? Because I am just bursting with inspiration. I create things nonstop, like all the time. I don't even have to look for anything. And why? Because, uh, all those years where, where I was stuck in that closet and I was just collecting all the negative material. The funny thing is that literally, us too, exactly because of how the split happened and be because of uh, the uh, particularities of um, why it happened. Um, I was the one receiving all the negativity and I am the pessimistic one. She is optimistic. Like the the change when, when, when there was a, a switch between us, the... the the most recent one. Uh, everyone who knew her were were astonished how everything changed in an instant. There's a, mm -hmm. an absolutely different person because I got all the dark uh, and negative stuff uh, into me. Mm -hmm. But that is the reason why I, I could create so much and everything, but everything I create comes from darkness. I tried many times to create something positive because, well, you know, it's just, I actually want to be nice uh, to the world. I want, I want to uh, do good things. So I thought, well, why don't I create something, some 
nice tunes who, for people to chill to, it doesn't work. I can only create from all the dark experience that I had mm. over over the whole of my life. So, and all of this baggage has been within me and now it's bursting. So also I, I kind of feel that we have assigned parts of the brain that are assigned only to us because that personality didn't even listen to music. She mm -hmm. couldn't create anything at all. She didn't draw. She didn't take pictures. She didn't do like music, not even close to that. Um, whereas I think I'm, uh, we, we also are ambidextrous, uh, which means uh, that, I'm sorry, that's my phone. I hope it doesn't bother you. It sounds um, like an ice cream truck. <laughs> yeah, that's the sound. Sound oh, it is. For, okay. for my speech. Okay. Very <laughs> so, cool, very cool. Uh, it's um, uh, basically that we're ambidextrous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can write with both hands. So she yes, yeah. was a, a right handed person. I am like, I'm not left handed, but I can use. Uh, uh, both hands freely probably mm -hmm. because my part of the brain is the uh right um right side of it so sure, sure. uh so basically i think this is also one of the things that um apply to to my creativity but also the uh to the mental condition i am used to not you know opening up on those things and uh with music i started being much much more open and mm -hmm. all my songs are basically like every single song that i ever made mm, uh was inspired by some event that that made me very emotional and very unhappy and i just wrote a song about it basically the the whole music project was around that I needed, I was just like you writing, uh, poetry first. And then yeah. I also my, realized my mom that was the same. My mom was the same. She, 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 um, she hasn't, she's yet to show me this, this very depressing poetry, but I'm, I'm waiting for it. <laughs> yeah. Well, depressing poetry. Then I realized that I actually want to sing that poetry. Then I realized mm -hmm. that there is no one really there to help me and make music for it. So I'm going to do it myself. So I went to school to uh, uh, study music production and uh, there we are, but it, it's always about, uh, those verses. It's always about uh, getting those things out there. Uh, and uh, I just recently released uh, my first EP, which has uh, five songs. And all of the, those five songs are uh, based on uh, five different um, uh, emotions and events that I uh, went through over the course of last year. Uh, and uh, this is also something that that brings uh, my audience to me and, and makes people relate to what I do. Um, but um, yeah, I, I, I think uh, without uh, that, I might have still been struggling uh, with uh, uh, getting the thoughts out of my head and, and living through that because again, th there was this uh, um, a lot of um, forbidden um feelings like feelings that i'm not allowed to do those things uh kind of and also suppressed. thanks to thanks to the project i also uh prove to myself and others that i exist which is again as as you mentioned with dad uh one of the things uh, uh that um uh, appears uh uh quite often is that uh people with dad feel like uh that thing doesn't even exist uh, because of the society, sure. how the society views it. Uh, but even worse, uh, the people with the ADL already feel that they don't exist. So they don't have mm. to, to have a society to tell them that. Uh, because yeah. it's always like, oh, maybe I'm actually that person. Maybe like everyone wants me to be that person. Maybe I actually am. Maybe I'm not myself. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm her. And that's where it's the most frustrating. And I actually wrote a song about that too. And it's like one of the most dramatic uh, things I've ever written. Um, 
uh, is just it's really painful uh, to to uh, struggle to understand mm -hmm. uh, who you are and whether you exist. And again, thanks to that, thanks to my music project, I find people who are like me. I uh, can uh, think those things through. So um, yeah, this is how creativity basically helped me with uh, my um, mm -hmm. mental health issues. I think it's, um, you know, it's, 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 qu it's quite a good, if I had to try and make a little bit of a comparison, I mean, you know, like the, the, in the past, there was a, a lot of mystery around autism. You know, the the basis of what people understood about it was through movies like Rain Man. Um, that was kind of people's perception of what autism is. Um, you know, as as the world has sort of progressed and people, autistic adults and um, and advocates and allies have got online to to talk about it and sort of. Um, I guess address the stigma and and sort of give the the reality the reality of of living um, on the spectrum. Um, people start start to to I guess take it a bit more seriously. You know, like you you can definitely see a a contrast between people nowadays that you talk to um, who use like social media and who who actively you know go on and search things and and see watch content on youtube and you know there's a lot more opportunities for them to really be exposed to um neurodiversity i guess uh, things related to autism and even though it is well it's debatable but even though we are a portion uh, a minority of the population um, because of social media we can all congregate in this massive online circle which is very big you know if you take the world's population um to be to be conservative based on the stats two percent is probably more than that um two percent of what is it like seven eight billion there's still quite a lot of people um and i guess you know one of the one of the issues that might be um you know a problem you know the problem for me talking to perhaps the older generation like my grandparents about it is that they just have no idea how to relate at all. They don't have any comprehension. I can imagine that considering the the rates of, of DID and also the, the stigma around it, it's, it's going to be very, very, very difficult to be able to be open about it, be able to um, genuinely tell people about it without, um, I guess, receiving, you know, the judgment. I guess. Um, do you think that would be a, an, a good comparison or is that? Well, first thing I did uh, when starting this project uh, was just to actually cut off myself from everyone in my life who uh, was from her life, from the past life. Mm -hmm. Yeah because I know that those people would not understand at all because of how different we are. Um, so like all, all her best friends, all her uh, like very close people, they would mm -hmm. not understand a thing of what's going on. Um, and I just realized that it's, it's just, if it's impossible to explain, uh, although again, Admittedly, there were people who understood that something has happened, but when mm -hmm, I approached mm -hmm. them with a diagnosis, some some of them, and that was also a, quite a pain, they were saying that, no, you, you need to search for another doctor, which I did, by the way. I actually had mm -hmm, two mm -hmm. doctors uh, diagnose Good. me, just, you know, to be sure. Um, and, uh, uh <laughs> Yeah, so I, I just realized that I need to be around people who actually are willing to understand uh, mm -hmm. uh, neurodiversity, at least for the time being, before it um, becomes uh, not mainstream, but like something that, that mm -hmm. the, the world understands. Because right yeah, now well, it's it, like... It is it's, growing. It's, <laughs> yeah, it, it's growing, exactly. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, I, I don't... 
I, I'm not thinking about it yet. I know f- that for now, with uh, my audience as is, I can already see that there are so many people who appreciate what I do and they appreciate mm-hmm. what I'm sharing with the world and they uh, they actually understand it. I, I don't know whether it's uh, the like the, the way I'm explaining it that is more... Um, not 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 relatable, but like people tend to understand what I'm trying to explain, um, or is it the people? Because my audience is like pretty niche because of the genre I'm in, uh, but somehow those those things came together, and I don't think like over the over the year that uh, since I started, um, I would have only one or two people who wouldn't believe me, mm. uh, yeah. and even then I provided arguments there's i have a quite a few things that can make anyone uh just stop and listen because i can even like if i if i um give a picture there were people uh, well i don't share my face too much but like if i if i do it in a safe way like there you go look is that the same person and my other self actually doesn't look like me which yeah. is uh, which is crazy, but it's been proven by um, scientists that some people with DID might develop a biologically, uh, physically uh, different uh, uh, appearances, which is wow. crazy. But uh, yeah, we we don't we don't share too much uh, a, a side of our history, our parents, our like background, but otherwise mm-hmm. we are very different. And so I can easily prove to people who um, don't trust me, but luckily there's very many people who, who do trust me, who understand that, that such things can happen in this mad world. Uh, and uh, there is a reason why, why that happens. So, Somehow, so far, I've been very lucky that um, I don't have to uh, go out of my own way to um, prove myself. But still, mm, yeah, I, I am. I'm getting ready for for those things to to happen one day. And I don't know, maybe to a diagnosis mm. could help. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's 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 crazy. Just like so. I was talking about like the Rain Man film around autism and stuff. And, you know, there is, there is a lot of movies and a lot of films out there, which hinge upon the, the, the idea of split personalities or multiple personalities. Like that sounds very like in my head, that sounds very similar to the effects that, that Rain Man's had on society. Like I think there was a film, what called split, about the I can't remember his name, the bald headed dude who goes crazy and is a personality where he like crawls on the walls and stuff. Like do you think that the, that that kind of sort of sensationalized media is is kind of harmful to I guess I guess individuals like yourself? I did think about that. Uh I'm not sure. It, it depends on how narrow you look at the movie. If you look at the movie and say, oh, if that's how it happens, then it's happening uh, all, mm. all, all the way through. Although sure. what I liked about this movie is that it portrays uh, the uh, people with um, DID as uh, very unique systems. This is what it is. Like There's very unique systems. If you can have two people inside one head, then and, and it's already uh, something different uh, to what you see um, mm-hmm. from other people, right? So how many actually different mixes of different people could there be? Uh, so it's like, okay, yeah. in one yeah. in one system, there might be evil uh, personalities. In another mm-hmm. system, there might be all harmful personalities. In my s- system, it, the one thing that kind of uh, um, makes us similar is that there are like two very uh hard working individuals this is mm-hmm. i think something that we relate on and that that's probably genetics so very we're very energetic and and hard working well i don't know uh, just just that and so which is why we're i think we're pretty adequate and we can actually communicate with each other as opposed to other systems mm-hmm. where where there's like absolute chaos and people 
those mm. personalities within the one hand cannot agree with each other. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I actually did like the concept, like how they explained it, that uh, sure. those those changes in, in one's brain can be very unique and that uh, those changes can actually be even physical, which is true. Mm. Uh, this is w- what I have uh, have seen in we even have like different weight, for instance. It's like my my yeah. balanced weight. I, I don't change from from my weight now. And and she was struggling with uh, her weight, which is ten kilos more, and she couldn't lose weight ever. I didn't even mm-hmm. have to. I didn't do anything. It's just disappeared. Um, <laughs> she she uh, was binge eating all the time when she was stressed. When I'm mm-hmm. stressed, I don't eat at all. I just I I hate food. Like uh, that's how bad it is and this is this like different uh hormonal systems different um uh physical like biorhythms and and stuff Mm -hmm. uh, this is how crazy uh the difference are uh, differences are thank you very much for that i um yeah it's 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 really interesting to me to to you know i'm always very very keen and very interested in learning about different, you know, brains and, and their experiences. And I'm always, you know, I'm always very, I guess I just want to say that I, I appreciate you sort of telling me about it. <laughs> um, thank you very much for that, Nedrix. No